Oh, when I came out of uh, college and had had my stint in professional athletics, um, I remember um, trying to figure out where I can make the most impact in my life. And I sort of got involved in doing educational programs, find out I could teach, and it sort of has just snowballed from there. I always tell people, you don't, you don't go to school to do what I do, you sort of fall into it. And if you have the qualities of the, to, to make it happen, they sort of manifest themselves. I played intercollegiate athletics at Georgia Tech, so I've been there for quite some time. Um, I got drafted in the NFL draft to the Green Bay Packers, and soon after got cut because I hurt myself. But then I was able to, um, the World League, this entity that existed for two years, the World League of American Football, um, came into existence, and I actually got a play, chance to play football in Frankfurt, Germany for two spring seasons. And it was just an incredible experience. It took me to uh, play in um, Wembley Field, the old Wembley Field in London, which was the Queen's Grass, um, the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona, Spain. Oh. And very, yes, fabulous. And, um, and a assortment of other stadiums within the United States. So football has literally taken me all over the world. Uh, but more importantly, it sort of has broadened my perspective, and, and I still carry that with me now in all the things that I do in terms of advising students, dealing with international students, and, and, and sharing experiences and what have you. Uh, that, that, that was the predecessor to me deciding um, to really get into these educational programs. Uh, I was sort of at the end of my football career, and, or had dealt with a number of injuries and was wondering, do I go through the rehabbing and continually trying to get on an NFL team and this kind of thing, and do I go the Canadian route? And I had a, um, a former professor who I was just talking to. I didn't go to see him. I was walking through the halls and happened to see him. And he said, you know, when, when he's making decisions, he said what helped him is to choose uh, the option that would have the biggest impact. And I started really thinking about that in terms of, you know, what, my, what impact would I have playing football if I continued to pursue this, and what impact I would have doing these sort of educational things that I had done a little bit of. And it sort of became very clear that I would have more impact doing that. So that's been a very pivotal piece of advice for me. So if you call breaking things an experiment, uh, my father used to work for the old AT&T Bell South and he was a phone repairman at one point in time before he moved up. And um, he used to, they used to let him bring home old phones uh, that would have been thrown away or what have you. And for a kid, so he'd bring home these old phones. And somehow I found out they had magnets in them. And to me at that time, magnets were the best thing ever, right? And so I sort of learned a lot about how to unscrew things and how things were put together by trying to get to the magnet that's in a phone. And so that, I guess, uh, is sort of one of my first and most impactful scientific experiments, if you want to call it that. I love the iteration. I love the fact that you sort of have an idea, throw that rock into the pond, look at the ripples, and what is it, uh, wash, rinse, and reset, and redo, something like that, and reset. And that, that's, that's sort of cool. That you don't have to, in this field, you don't have to be right the first time. You just sort of try and you learn and you try and you learn and that process continues to go. And given that it's computing and uh, that we do a lot of this stuff in, um, working with the students that we work with creates this sort of collaborative cycle. And it's a very, very interesting and rich, rich environment. Uh, perseverance, by far. And that's part of this whole cycle is that you know, at two in the morning where you're trying to figure something out, you've got to keep battling and keep going. And the interesting thing is that bonds you to other people who are in the field, is that everybody has felt that, you know, I can't figure this out, I've looked at the internet, I cannot be the only one on the planet who is thinking about this. And sometimes you realize you just might be. Um, but that's, that's pretty cool and rewarding when you persevere and get down to the next one. And then that begets another problem and it all starts over, but still it's sort of, it's very rewarding. I would have to say, in terms of this, this, this education uh, realm, um, my, my students, um, when you are given a lecture in front of 200, 250 students, and you hear somebody in the third row say, oh, right, you really live for that sound. You know, when, when I first started doing public speaking, the advice was, um, if you can affect one person, you've done your job, no matter how big the crowd. So I sort of took that over the teaching. If on that day, there's one student who 
either verbally or somehow said, oh, I get it. That has really helped. And then I sort of carry that over in the mentoring and the, um, the, the advising that I do is that if you can help a student get to that in their life, outside of academic pursuits, but just to that in their life, oh, I didn't think about it that way. Oh, I didn't know that option existed. That's really cool. So that, that really influenced. So my students, and I've been fortunate that I've had over the years quite a few uh, that have affected me positively. I would have to say pictures of my family uh, because they, they provide a great base for me. Uh, this type of job takes a lot of hours, a lot of weird hours, doing a lot of weird things and knowing that they're there, um, that you do have a home base and that they're supporting you and they believe in what you do uh, no matter how crazy, no matter how many boxes of pizza you have to order or, or how many crazy things you have to do, uh, that's extremely helpful. A as wide a variety as possible. Uh, everything from Bach and Beethoven to Basie to Marley to all the current rap and hip hop that goes on. Uh, I don't do a lot of country music, uh, pop music, although country music is good. I like the stories that it tells. But uh, uh, So I do a lot of a lot of that and what that does is sort of jumbles up the pie I guess, sort of jumbles up uh, my, my thought processes and helps me to begin to continue to be nimble and think of things from fresh points of view. Uh, if I, I find myself, if I, if I leave uh, Pandora on one station for too long, it, it gets, and now that I have a six-year-old daughter, uh, a lot of kids stuff, so I know every, every, every Disney, no, every Disney princess song, every Disney, Disney princess song I know to every movie, and we sing it at high volume in the car when we're when we're traveling from here to here to there. Um, so do a lot of that. So it's a lot of fun.